Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for Sunday, May 24th, this Ascension Sunday. I'd like to turn your attention to the announcements at the back of your bulletin. Uh, I also would like to advise you to download our bulletin, which is available in the description below underneath this Facebook or YouTube video, or you can find it at our website, www.centralprespb.com, if you click the publications link at the top of the webpage. Today's announcements are, Central Sessions has been postponed in-person worship service through the end of this month. A decision about future in-person in worship will be made at that time. Uh, follow us on social media or check out our website for more information. The session should meet uh, via phone or text sometime in the next two to three days, so you will find out if we will start holding um, in-person worship next week. Um, congratulations again to our graduating seniors, Logan Mosley, Weston Mosley, Lindsey Sanchez, and Cody Vick. Uh, the deadlines for the Junior High Jubilee and the Montreat Youth Celebration for Senior High Students offered by the Presbytery of Arkansas have extended their deadlines for registration. Both trips still have a few openings left. If you have any interested youth, please contact me through social media or uh, contact uh, one of the church accounts. I will say that I spoke with the uh, person who was heading up those trips with the Presbytery last week. Um, they wanted to convey again that if you are afraid to make a deposit on those trips, that if those trips are canceled, those deposits will be returned to you by the Presbytery of Arkansas. Ferncliff is asking for your recipes for cookbook fundraiser. Check out their Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash ferncliffcamp for more information. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Links to each are found on our website. And speaking of our website, once again, online giving is now available. Uh, please click the Donate Now link at the top of our webpage. We take credit cards, debit cards, and checks. You can set up monthly, weekly, or bi-weekly recurring donations if you so choose. Uh, you can also do one-time donations um, if you so wish. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. In life, in death, in life beyond death, Jesus Christ is Lord. Over powers and principalities, over all who determine, control, govern, or finance the affairs of humankind, Jesus Christ is Lord. Of the poor, of the broken, of the sinned against, and the sinner, Jesus Christ is Lord. Above the church, beyond our most excellent theologies, and in the quiet corners of our hearts, Jesus Christ is Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will forgive their evil deeds, and I will remember their sin no more. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins to Almighty God, first using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Almighty God, Father and Mother to orphans, protector of outcasts, provider for the needy, Savior of all, we confess that we have neglected the work you entrusted to us. We have been half-hearted in our prayers, in our care for those who suffer, and in our witness to you, to your love for us and for all. God of mercy, restore us, support us, strengthen and establish us, that we may do your will on earth until you come again. And now silently. Amen. As people born of the water and the spirit, we have died to the old life, and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen.
Our first reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the book of Acts, beginning with the third verse and proceeding through verse 14. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Our second reading <clears throat> comes from the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 11. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, <clears throat> and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you were glorified in heaven. Amen. What do you give to someone who has everything? Try as I might to deal with that conundrum, I often feel that my own efforts come up short. 
usually I end up focusing on something that person collects or has some interest in and then offer up a small token, hoping that this person understands that it really is the thought that counts. That's what we tell ourselves, is it not? It's the thought that counts. I care about you and this gift is meant to convey my feelings. What do you give to the person who has everything? And I do mean everything because the person I have in mind is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the word of God incarnate, the one about whom Colossians testifies is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. What do you give to the person who has everything? Seems like a strange question to ask in relation to our Lord. But, precisely because Jesus Christ is our hope, our priceless treasure, our source of our good, all good, he is our joy, that peace which surpasses all understanding, the way, the truth, and the life, who not only grants us access to God, but also opens the door to God's abiding presence, we would, I think, in all sincerity, want to give something to him. He is the one who died for us, who rose for us, who reigns in power for us, and who indeed prays for us. He's the one who allowed himself to be broken that we might be made whole, who emptied himself so that, he might, so that we might be filled with all the blessings of heaven. He is, in short, the very best that God could give to each and every one of us. So again, I ask this simple question, what do you give to the person who has everything? And the somewhat surprising answer to that question can be found in our reading from John's Gospel. The 17th chapter of John is widely known by biblical scholars as Jesus's high priestly prayer. It comes on the heels of his farewell discourse, his final teachings and instructions to his disciples just before his arrest and crucifixion. In this prayer that Jesus prays, he highlights many of those themes he had discussed with his disciples. But in this prayer, he also makes a direct appeal to God to care for his disciples. How remarkable and how typical. He spends his last moments before his arrest and death praying for the ones whom he loved. But he did more than simply pray for his disciples in these verses. He expressed pride in them even asserting at one point he has been glorified in them. Quite a statement when you consider the fact that Judas Iscariot has already left the upper room in order to betray Jesus, that in just a matter of a few hours all of his disciples will abandon him, and that before the cock crows three times, Peter will have nine, will, will, before the cock crows, Peter will have denied knowing him three times. Moreover, Jesus expresses his gratitude to God for giving the disciples to him. Listen again to his words. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those 
whom you gave me because they are yours. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given to me so that they may be one as we are one. Think about that. God's answer to the question, what do you give to someone who has everything, is people, just like you and me. As imperfect, impetuous, impatient, stubborn, stiff-necked, and sinful, broken, belligerent, and bedeviling as we all have a tendency to be, God gives us to Jesus. And Jesus is truly grateful for the gift. Is that not the most astonishing thing you have ever heard? As if we were all wrapped up in neat little packages and topped with beautiful bows, God presents each and every one of us to our Lord Jesus, who beams with joy and shouts with glee, Abba, they're exactly what I wanted. Now, were I to guess, I would dare say that the notion that we are a treasured gift makes more than a few of us uncomfortable, but I wonder why that is. Why is it that we are so quick to demean ourselves and to believe the worst about ourselves? Why is it that we are so uncomfortable accepting praise or believing that we not only have value, but are valued by our Creator? Why do we allow guilt and shame to define us? Why do we so quickly forget that we're, we were created in the image of God and that God has crowned us with glory and honor and has given us dominion over the works of God's hands? Maybe the answer lies in part in the fact that many of us have spent our lives hearing how unworthy we all are. It's true that we are unworthy of God's grace, because if it were something that we merited or earned, then it would not be called grace. But too often, we confuse unworthiness with worthlessness. That is made all the more tragic when we consider that the scriptures bear witness to a glorious truth, that we are anything but worthless. In fact, if God deemed us worthless, why would God have become incarnate, lived among us, died as one of us, and raised us all to eternal life? Maybe others feel as it is boastful to see and claim value in ourselves. And to be sure, we all have probably met our fair share of people who consider themselves to be God's gift to the world. But the real problem is not that they see themselves as God's gift, but that they fail to realize we all are God's gift. If we can learn to see ourselves and everyone we meet as God's gifts, then that has a way of instilling true humility and service and self-sacrifice. If we could see the inherent value in everybody, then wouldn't it be a lot more difficult to keep our neighbors impoverished, to treat others unjustly, or to value an enemy's life less than that of a friend? Or maybe we feel uncomfortable accepting our true value and worth because then we might find that much is expected of us. But as the Westminster Short Shorter Catechism reminds us, our chief end is to glorify and enjoy God forever, forever, not just when other people are watching, not just when it is convenient for us, not just on Sunday mornings. So you see, much is already expected of us precisely because we are so precious in God's eyes. So there it is. But know that God did not choose to give us all to Jesus just so that we could simply sit on a shelf and look pretty. We've been given to Christ Jesus so that we might bear witness. We're told in Acts that after spending 40 days with his disciples, our Lord was about to ascend to his Father when his disciples asked him, Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We should note that in the Hebrew legal tradition, a witness was one who, because of experience and observation, was in a unique position to tell the truth in some deeply important matter. So the disciples' participation in the coming new age was to involve their truth-telling in connection with the most significant event in all of human history, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is why they were given by God to Jesus. They were, in short, to tell others the good news in order that they might, in turn, be brought to Christ. Because our Lord, it turns out, wants each of us, all of us, from north, south, east, and west, and every point in between. So the disciples' mission then becomes the church's mission today to bear witness. It's why God claims us in the waters of baptism. As God's gift, we are charged to enter the world and present to the world in word and deed the gift of God's grace to a world desperately in need of such grace. What then will we give to the one who has everything? To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would now at this time ask that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which can be made by direct uh, mail to the church, which our address is 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603, or through the Donate Now link at the top of our webpage, www.centralprespb.com. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him Lord to your honor and glory. Amen. Let us now at this time share our joys and concerns if there are any, I will let everyone know that we would like to keep those who uh, gave their lives in service uh, to this country um, in our prayers uh, this Memorial Day weekend. We were also asked to keep Sarah Sarton in our prayers. We were also asked to keep Kyle Judkins and his family in our prayers. We were also uh, asked to keep uh, those who are working on the front lines of the coronavirus epidemic um, and those who are currently manning jobs who are uh, in businesses that are currently reopening also in our prayers uh, please give them a blanket of protection and um, please allow them to not contract the virus in these coming days uh, we also ask for a couple of unnamed 
um, prayer requests. Uh, they have uh, medical issues is what I've been told. So if you would keep those people in your prayers and uh, continue to keep everyone who has <clears throat> lost loved ones to the coronavirus to uh, be with those who are our first responders, our medical uh, professionals, our, um, our correctional officers uh, who are also dealing with a massive outbreak in some of our units throughout the state and in the, uh, the federal penitentiary, uh, penitentiaries throughout the country. Um, please be with those who are, um, again, uh, manning positions and businesses that are reopening. Uh, we pray a hedge of protection all over all of those people. Um, holy and gracious Father, we thank you. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the t same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please be with those who we mentioned by name uh, <clears throat> a moment ago. Please be with those who are, have lost loved ones and who are fighting this coronavirus epidemic. And uh, please be with those <clears throat> those unnamed prayer requests. Uh, please give the doctors and nurses um, a... Uh, the wisdom to be able to uh, fight this epidemic and please be with those who are infected with the coronavirus and give those people your um, comfort and and know that let them know that you are with them including miss bernie slackey give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of jesus christ who taught us to pray together saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.